Kaleidoscope, a weekly public affairs program brought to you in partnership with the Urban League of Greater Cleveland, Kaleidoscope Magazine, and News Channel 5. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the broadcast today. You know, the annual Minority Men's Health Fair takes place Thursday, April the 24th at the Cleveland Clinic. Renal transplant surgeon and urologist Dr. Charles Modlin is here to tell us more about this year's event. Later on today, we'll hear from the NAACP Youth Advisor, Jocelyn Travis, Travis rather, and Coordinator of Black Studies at Cleveland State University, Prester Picker. They'll talk about the Act so competition, as it's called. And later in the broadcast after that, the executive director of the United Black Fund, Cecil Lipscomb, and executive director and CEO of the Cleveland Public Library, Felton Thomas, will share information about a gala to benefit the United Black Fund. Good morning again. I'm Leon Bibb. Good to have you with us. This is Kaleidoscope. And as we always say, so we begin. Beginning with a good friend, Charles Maudlin, medical doctor, renal transplant surgeon, and urologist at Cleveland Clinic. Good to have you with us, Charles. Well, thanks for having me back. Appreciate always it. Good to, always good to see you here, here on the broadcast today. It is, it is time for the uh, Minority Men's Health Center at the Cleveland Clinic. Well, it's going to be our 12th annual Minority Men's Health Fair. As you said, Thursday, April the 24th, we, we welcome all men to come in, but we specifically target especially African-American men and, and minor, minority men to undergo these free health screenings for the elimination of health care disparities. What are, you going, what are you going to be doing at, at this health fair? Sure. Well, you know, we have um, almost every clinical department represented at, at Cleveland Clinic. Every specialty is going to be represented to provide a, a variety of free health screenings. I think one of the most popular screenings historically or annually is the screening for prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. And that's done through a simple blood test. Sometimes we'll do an examination. Along with that, we screen for high blood pressure, diabetes, diabetes, kidney disease, um, we're screening, we have mental health screenings, HIV screenings, hepatitis C screenings, um, screenings, uh, risk assessment profiles for, for colorectal cancer, wellness screenings, and a variety is, of screenings. And this is all free? It's all free. All free, for, all free. For, for men there uh, on uh, April, the, April the 24th, uh, uh, Thursday, from 5.30 until 8.30. P.M., yes, yes in, in, the evening. in the evening. Right. Yeah, and, and parking and all of that? Uh, parking is free in the J.J. Garage, which is at 93rd and, and Euclid, between Euclid and, and, and Chester Avenues there. Uh, we want the men to take advantage of this. This is a really remarkable opportunity. We, each year we detect a number of serious conditions and diseases, such as prostate cancer and diabetes and other conditions, uh, that if detected early enough can actually be treated and cured. I bet you've had people come in there who were maybe in a bad way and, yeah. and, and at least they were in the hospital in the clinic w w when, you, when you discovered it. And well, in, in many situations and in the, I think what makes us unique also in terms of uh, health fairs is that we have a minority men's health center that operates three times a week throughout the year. Mm -hmm. um, if there, anybody is found to have an abnormality to health fair, we can actually get them into the center as well. But we have over 400 volunteers ready and, and willing to serve the men when they come to the health fair. Why are you highlighting minority men right now? Well, minority men suffer disproportionately from a number of uh, medical conditions, which we call health care disparities. You look at the case of black men. Black men, on average, live about eight years shorter life expectancy compared to Caucasian males. And so a lot of this is attributable to the health care disparities. There's a 30% uh, higher death rate from cancer each year, 44% higher rate, uh, death rate from heart disease mm -hmm. each year in the black male population, 80% 80, 80 higher incidence of diabetes, 180% higher incidence of stroke mm -hmm. in African Americans. And so we know that we need to be innovative and creative and, and try to engage you know, the minority community especially so we can put an end to these health care disparities. I'm willing to bet if any man shows up, regardless of that man's ethnicity, okay. you are going to see this man. We actually welcome everybody to come. Everybody. And is, 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 this is open to everybody. Exactly. The human body is the human body. Exactly. We even have some women coming. You know? <laughs> well, that's, a, that's a good thing. We, we try to make the event special for men. There are certain topics that men like to discuss, you uh -huh. know, am amongst themselves. Yeah. You and I were chatting before we started the broadcast today. You, you deal k kidney transplants. Sure. How many of those have you done, Charles? I think over the course of my career, I've done probably 700, you know, approaching maybe even close to 1,000. Mm -hmm. um, it's a team effort at, at the Cleveland Clinic. So when people come in, I mean, you know what you're dealing with. When they come in with, uh, with kidney problems or prostate problems, because that's the area of the world, the body that, that, that you specialize in, sure. you, can, you can see, you can detect all kinds of things early on. Well, and, and again, you, you know, you said the, the key word is early detection of, of disease. Um, you know, I mentioned hypertension and diabetes. Those are the two leading causes of kidney disease and, and need for kidney transplantation. So if we can detect these and, and, and control these and treat these early, we can avoid 
the patient developing end-stage kidney disease and, and needing a kidney transplant. That's just one example of the impact of the health fair. This is going to be at the Cleveland Clinic on Thursday, uh, April the 24th at the, at the main campus. Main the campus. Where, where, where should people show up there for this health fair, which well, is free, by the way? Exactly. Um, you know, if they're parking, they can park in what they call the JJ Garage, 93rd and, and Euclid Avenue. Um, there are multiple you know, doors where they can come in and, and enter through the Glickman Tower or the main campus. You'll have signage uh, all, all around the place. All, all around the place. The main campus uh, or the main door uh, of the Cleveland Clinic right by the water, uh -huh. the, the water fountain there. You know you have saved lives in the many years that you've been doing this at the Cleveland Clinic. I know that the, through early detection, you and the others who are working with you, you have saved lives when, when men have walked in there. And, you know, and I really appreciate um, the fact that you say that, but, I mean, that's our role, that's our mission, that's our responsibility as health care providers. We have to do whatever we need to do to educate the community, to get them to understand how it is important that they get in for these screenings. You know, a lot of times men... If they don't have any symptoms or, or, or signs or pains or aches, they don't think that there's a, a problem or need for them to come in. Um, but we're here to let them know and educate them properly that they do need to get in and get checked out for these and, conditions. And the women can come along with them, sometimes dragging men to the doctor's office. We right. hear that all the time. Right. Women have to drag their men to the doctor's office. And you're telling the women, drag him on into exactly. the Cleveland Clinic. We're very, very appreciative of the women because in many situations, the men actually admit that the women are the ones that... Uh -huh. made them come in. Yeah. Um, but we're happy that we're growing each year. We started in 2003, um, and, and so this is our, marks our 12th annual uh, Minority Men's Health Fair. Well, let's give it a, a good plug. Dr. Charles Modlin, who's renal transplant surgeon and urologist at Cleveland Clinic, uh, he reminds us that this is going to be this free clinic for, for d directed toward men especially, and minority men especially, is going to be free April the 24th, which is a Thursday, starts at 5.30 and runs until 8.30 in the evening. Everything is free, including the parking in the JJ garage. Everything is free, and we have many more physicians available, also primary care physicians. We're trying to encourage all the men to establish care with a primary care physician in terms, in, in addition to a urologist. You'll have a full staff right there. Oh, we're, we're ready to serve them in. Okay. Many thanks, Dr. Okay. Charles Modlin. Good to see you, my right. friend. You too, thank you. He's a good friend. He's a good guy here in Cleveland, and, and thank you for keeping us all healthy. Thank you. So vital, so vital. Log on to Newsnet5.com each week to see what's coming up on Kaleidoscope. Coming up next on this broadcast, encouraging students to participate in the NAACP Act So competition. I'll take a break, but be right back in just a moment. Welcome back to more of Kaleidoscope. The NAACP's Academic, Cultural, Technological, and Scientific Olympics, also known as ACT-SO, takes place on Saturday, April the 26th. Youth advisor Jocelyn Travis and coordinator of Black Studies at Cleveland State University, Prester Picker, Prester Pickett, are here to talk about the ACT-SO competition and explain why it's important for students to participate. It's good to have you with us. Prester Pickett sitting on the outside and Jocelyn Travis with the NAACP sitting on the inside next yes. to me. Good to have you both here. Great to be here. Thank you. Oh, yeah. to tell, tell me about this. Uh, we know about what the NAACP does, or we should know about what the NAACP does but this is called the act so competition what does what is act so competition act so is where we actually have young people students african american students ninth through 12th grade compete in the arts and sciences we call it the olympics of the mind mm -hmm. we want young people to understand that there's more to competing than just athletics and mm -hmm. sports you can compete in the sciences and humanities and and the business entrepreneurship and so we have the act so competition that we've been doing in cleveland for over 30 years now um, it was started by Vernon Jarrett, journalist out of Chicago, and under the directorship of Dr. Benjamin Lawson Hooks, yeah. who was the national president and CEO at the time. Yeah. The ACTSO, uh, A-C-T-S-O, Academic, Cultural, Technological, and Scientific Olympics, right, Preston? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. To tell, tell me about what it is that you're trying to do with this and why you and the Black Studies Department at uh, Cleveland State University are involved. Well, with the Black Studies Program at Cleveland State University, I serve as the coordinator of the Howard A. Mims African American Cultural Center and with the conversation of culture in that acronym AXO uh, highlights our particular interest with the celebration through the Cultural Center. Although, again, we realize with the interdisciplinary aspects of black studies that these students who are excelling to the point of receiving recognition on the local level as well as a national level because many of these students who leave Cleveland after receiving acknowledgement on a local level advance to bring home gold medals and other medals to uh, our, our area 
can be considered to study at Cleveland State University. And we are definitely yeah. interested in that as well, thinking that there's a pipeline for our students from their high school excellence through their college excellence that can be experienced at our university. Yeah. This is going to be Saturday, April the 26th at Warrensville, uh, high, Warrensville High School on Northfield Road in the community of Warrensville Heights, yes. uh, one of the southeast suburbs of Cuyahoga County, Saturday, April the 26th. How do, how do kids get involved in this competition now? Well, they can simply call our branch office, 216-231-6260, um, and request an application. We can email it to them. Once we get their application back, we then schedule them to, to come before the judges. Prester has always served as one of our judges, as well as one of our coaches to help prep our young people. Once they win locally, first place, then they go, we take them to an all-expense paid uh, trip to compete nationally. And you've done that before. I oh, mean, you've got... Every year. People, uh, kids have gone on. Every year. And what, what students are we looking at now? Who are uh, we looking at? What age group? We're looking at, again, these students are ninth through 12th grade, but these students are, we have so many brilliant young people in our community. Um, we had a student, um, uh, I'll mention John Boykin III, who actually won four years in a row in engineering and earth and space science. Mm -hmm. He won locally and nationally. Um, and so we have students who compete in everything, instrumental classical piano, vocal contemporary, visual visual arts and drawing, computer science, um, and the sciences. We had a young lady win in, in the physics category. All, we've got the whole gamut. What, 26 what, categories what, of competition. And we're looking at African-American students primarily, yes. right? Ninth through the 12th grade correct. from all over Greater Cleveland. That's correct. Now, what do you want to happen with this, Prester Pickett? What comes out of this and why is this so vital? Well, one of the things that comes out of this is uh, the opportunity for the students to acquire mentors individuals in our community that are experts in their field that have already been acknowledged on a national level mm -hmm. to think that uh, in the area of photography or journalism hopefully you would even consider one day acknowledging the opportunity to work with these students or even spend one coffee break with them mm -hmm. to talk to them about your oratorical background as well to think that Dr. Julian Earls in the area of science and technology the and the academics Yes, those are individuals who are ideal for networking with the students. Their schedules are very busy, and that means that uh, the work of Donna Flint in uh, training judges and identifying other talent in Cleveland, the various cultural institutions in Cleveland, that we would want that our goal to be accomplished through networking these students to the other institutions and the various organizations that are here to support them. So, so, the, so the bottom line is we will, if, if you've got a youngster out there or a youngster out there who wants to get in this competition, uh, academic, cultural, technological, scientific things, and it's called the AXO uh, Olympics here, here in the Greater Cleveland Area, sponsored by the NAACP and helped along with Cle by Cleveland State University, they should make a phone call to 216-231-6260. The number at the bottom of the screen and you can get more information if you make a phone call on that and really these kids can really launch themselves into Absolutely. careers and be inspired and go on to national competitions. That's right, Las Vegas in July. Las Vegas, <laughs> Las Vegas in July. <laughs> yes. Been there, done that. It's wonderful too. <laughs> yes. It's hot but wonderful. Okay. Many thanks. Jocelyn yeah. Travis, Youth Advisor for the NAACP and Prester Pickett, Coordinator of Black Studies at Cleveland State University. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Saturday, April 20th. 26, Warrensville High School on Northfield Road. It is the AXO competition. The phone number is at the bottom of the screen, 231-6260 uh, in the 216 area code. Thanks so much for being on the broadcast. Thank you. Taking a break, but returning in just a moment after this. Welcome back to more of Kaleidoscope today. The United Black Fund of Greater Cleveland hosts the Renaissance on Saturday, May the 3rd. It's a gala to benefit the organization and will feature Grammy nominee Kenny Lattimore. Executive Director Cecil Lipscomb and the board president Felton Thomas are here to tell us what to expect at this event. Good to have you with us. Uh, Executive Director of the United Black Fund, Cecil Lipscomb and Felton Thomas sitting on the outside there, Executive Director and CEO of the Cleveland Public Library, but on the board of the United Black Fund. Oh, oh you got your hands. Got a lot of things going on. Got a lot of things going on, okay. but happy to be here. Cecil, let's begin with you. What's the mission of the United Black Fund? 
The United Black Fund was established to acquire and accumulate funds uh, to redistribute those to nonprofit organizations throughout Greater Cleveland equitably uh, to address issues of poverty, illiteracy, and uh, workforce development, yeah. things of that nature. You actually collect money, and, and I, I contribute from my personal account Absolutely. to the United Black Fund every year, and, and it helps organizations all along that are part of the UBF. And we certainly appreciate that, yes. Yeah. You've got a big event coming up, uh, Felton Thomas. Uh, you're on the board there. Tell me about this big event coming up on uh, May the 3rd. We're really excited by it. This is our 33rd gala. And uh, this opportunity, we're, we're really looking at the city is going through a renaissance of sort. So we decided to take the theme of renaissance as our theme for the gala. Mm -hmm. And so we're, it's a Harlem renaissance of the 20s. We're asking everybody to come out dressed in the 20s for this gala run. That's going to be something, asking people to dress up in the 1920s costumes. It really, really is. Yeah. Now, wh wh where's this going to be at on, on, on Saturday, May 3rd? It's going to be at the Intercontinental. Mm -hmm. So, and, and this is your big fundraiser, too. Absolutely. Right? We, yeah. we, uh, we supported 96 agencies last year. We, we provided grants to those organizations. So it's a celebration about what we've accomplished, mm -hmm. as well as it's the opportunity for us to take a look at what we're going to do going forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to ask Camera 3 if we can to get a shot of this, because I just love this, this thing that you brought along with you. Thank you. We, 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 and we'll get a shot of this. Uh, uh, what, 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 what's the entertainment going to be now? Tell me about uh, Kenny Lattimore. Okay, so Kenny Lattimore. Lattimore is a Grammy-nominated songwriter, singer. He has been, uh, he's actually a, a wonderful person himself in that he has his own foundation to help fathers. Uh, we thought he was a good image for our, our uh, evening. Mm -hmm. um, but in addition to that, we have some local entertainment, uh, Hub's Groove, which is a Cleveland-based uh, mm -hmm. band. We're yeah. going to have the speakeasy reception that they're going to play at. <laughs> and then we also have uh, uh, some some local talent that will we'll play throughout the evening. Felton Thomas, you're, you're, you're uh, CEO of the Cleveland Public Library, and so you are a man steeped in history. Tell me about this Harlem Renaissance of the 1920s. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, the Harlem Renaissance was really the time where uh, the African American community was steeped in culture. Mm -hmm. And we see an opportunity for the city to be steeped in culture. And the idea of, of having the Renaissance be uh, the theme of our gala is really to get our community out and just have some fun, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is about, it's, you know, we, we have a great opportunity for a lot of people to meet each other and, and, and get together. But it's really about a lot of people getting together and having a good time around the music, yeah. around the time. Yeah. Cecil, during the 1920s, I'm told that, 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 that folks would often get in Harlem, New York, they'd often get together at, at, at parties, maybe on a Sunday afternoon, right. and they would have poetry readings, they would have songs, they, they would have music, they would have dance talking about the culture in, 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 in the black community mm -hmm. uh, of the United States at, 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 at that time period, celebrating that culture. And That's you right. want to bring that to the UB United Black Fund event on, on Saturday, May 3rd. Absolutely. The Renaissance means a cultural change. And we, we feel like as an organization, we're going through a cultural change, an evolution in how we address the community's needs. We also are challenging the community to uh, uh, talk to its citizens, to bring forth volunteers mm -hmm. uh, and, and and engage Cleveland in a new way. Where can we find tickets and what's the cost? So the tickets, individual tickets, are $150 per person, which is a portion is tax deductible. Mm -hmm. uh, tickets can be purchased on our line at www.unitedblackfund.org. You can call our office, which is 216-566-9263. Uh, we, we're just going to have a good time, raise some money, uh, and those monies are redistributed to the community. Mm -hmm. We have a small staff. We don't consume a lot. We give it out to those nonprofit organizations that and, need and you do wonderful things. I have worked with the United Black Fund for many, many years, o o o over, over, over the years here in Greater Cleveland, and it's just a wonderful, wonderful organization. Uh, Saturday, May 3rd, the Intercontinental Hotel starts at 6 o'clock right. and goes on. Yes, on right. Into oh, the evening. Into the evening. On into the evening. <laughs> right, Felton? Right. On into the evening. And, uh, and, and guests are encouraged to dress in 1920s attire. The, with the flapper dresses, yeah. tails, oh, the, the well, whole you nine. know it's going to be a big do. Absolutely. You know it's going to be a big do. Absolutely. So, and, and the tickets are $100, $150. That's right? correct. $150, but you get so much for that organization. I've got a phone number at the bottom of the screen. I want you to write that phone number down. 566-9263. Uh, That's in the 216 area code. Or you can 
go to unitedblackfund.org, get more information on everything that we've been talking about. Why well, I got Felton there, I've got 30 seconds or so, I think. Felton, everything is going well in your job at the library? Everything is going great, and we're so excited about the summer reading club coming up in the kids. So if, if I can just put a pitch in for getting our young people out there and reading during this summer, you know, we know with the third grade guarantee that's been put forward to our kids, the importance yeah. of reading is so important. So this summer, we can challenge every parent to get out there and get their child into a library and reading as a part of their summer reading program. Thank you so much, Felton Thomas of the Cleveland Public Library and the United Black Fund, Cecil Lipscomb, Executive Director of the United Black Fund. Thanks for being on the broadcast. Thank you. We will see you Saturday, May 3rd at the Intercontinental Hotel. Taking a break, but back in a moment. Marsha Maccabee from the Urban League with a thought. Yes, indeed. Leon, thank you so much. And, you know, didn't we have a great show today? Great show. We had a great show. And what really just intrigued me is we have so many wonderful role models in our community that were on the show today who are doing so much in our community. And it's important that our young people can see these role models and touch them and talk to them and understand what their journey has been so that they can see somebody else has made it. I too can make it. So that's a really important thing that we're doing at the Urban League in terms of mentoring programs and exposing young people to people who can help them to get where it is that they want to go in a positive way. And every one of these role models who was on the show, including you, is an educated person, somebody who yes. stuck with education. Absolutely. And if they dropped out, they went back and got, and got it, kept on absolutely. going. Absolutely, absolutely. And sometimes we don't know. We don't see it in ourselves. Others see it in us. And so we have to help young people discover mm -hmm. that uh, thing within them that will help them to get where they want to go and help pull it out. Mm -hmm. We've got about 40 seconds remaining, I would estimate. Things are going well for you in the Urban League? Oh, things are going well. Yeah, we're, mm -hmm. we're making great progress uh, every day. I'm just encouraged. We're, we're ready to take that next step and really grow the organization at this point. And uh, it's, it's just really uh, a wonderful time to be there. Um, it's a legacy. It's a divine assignment. And I'm having fun. In our final 15 seconds, you're like the Energizer Bunny. You just keep on going. <laughs> <laughs> you don't ever stop, do you? <laughs> That's what James says. <laughs> Her husband, James. That's going to do it. Take everybody and do well. <laughs>